Thank you for attending this evening's meeting. To reduce any and all unnecessary disturbances, please place your devices on silent, vibrate, or off settings. Additionally, if you'd like to speak on any agenda item, please complete a citizen participation form. Um, they're over on the table. In order to maintain orderly conduct and proper decorum in this public meeting, please refrain from any remarks or actions that are disruptive or intended to be slanderous, obscene, offensive, threatening, or insightful in any way. Any speaker purposefully failing to comply with the above will be invited to observe the remainder of the meeting via live stream. We have about two minutes. No, we're ready. We're ready? It's 7.36. All right, we are ready. It is currently 7.36, Tuesday, March 7, 2023. We are opening up for the historic town of Eatonville regular council meeting. Ms. King, do we have a quorum and would you take roll call? Yes, we do have a quorum. Councilwoman Brenda. Councilman Marlon Daniels. President. Councilman Theo Washington. President. Vice Mayor Daniels. Mayor Gardner. Here. Please stand for invocation and pledge of allegiance. Let us pray. And Father God, we thank you once again for this day that you have made. Thank you for this opportunity to live, move, and have our being. Thank you again for this community, Edenville, that you have placed us in to be stewards and residents. We again want to lift up this administration that you have allowed to be in place. Uh, give them continued uh, discretion and determination and decisions that will be beneficial and advantageous for this community. Again, thank you for everyone that works for this community. Uh, we pray for the residents of this community that you continue to bless us to respect each other's personalities and properties. Again, we thank you for this town council meeting that we can come and be further educated and updated on the state and the welfare of this our town. We thank you again for everything you're doing in, through, and for Edenville. We bless you and we praise you again for all things. We ask you these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Right, the first item on the agenda is the approval of the agenda. So I'm asking that the agenda be approved with. There was an addition to the code enforcement applications that we should have received in hard copy form as well as electronic form today. Mm -hmm. Second. Um, the, the other thing I'm going to ask is I'm going to ask for a verbal approval um, just to move forward and find you some financing, but I'll explain it later. So I will be asking for that. Um, it's not the writing, it's just inf informational and format, uh, formality. Uh, I ask that we move two, three, and four down so council decision for discussion. <coughs> two, three, and four. Item two, three, and four. Oh. Um, so the motion to move items two, three, and four to council decision. It's been moved to second. Second. It's been moved and second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? All right. I saw items two, three, and four be under council decisions. And we are including the third code enforcement? Yes. Okay. That's part of the, well, that's going to be part of the amendments to the approval of the agenda now. Yes. All right. So with all of the amendments and 
and request I move for the approval of the agenda. Oh. It's been moved to a second. Second. It's been moved to a second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? The agenda is approved with amendments as stated. Presentations and recognition. In recognition of the of Gambling Awareness Month, I will read the following proclamation. Office of the Mayor, Town of Eatonville, Florida. The Town of Eatonville, Florida proclaim and recognize this Problem Gambling Awareness Month, whereas the National Council on Compulsive Gambling, the Florida Council on Compulsive Gambling, and the Florida Department of Health Resource Center have designated March 2023 as Problem Gambling Awareness Month, and whereas Problem Gambling is a public health issue affecting thousands of Floridians of all ages, races, and ethnic backgrounds, and whereas Problem gambling has a significant societal and economic cost for individuals, families, businesses, and communities. And whereas problem gambling is treatable and treatment is effective in minimizing this harm to both individuals and society as a whole. And whereas numerous individuals, professionals, and organizations have dedicated their efforts to the education of the public about problem gambling and the availability and effectiveness of treatment. And whereas Floridians need to know that help and hope for problem gambling are available through the 24-7 confidential and multilingual helpline 888 admitted. And whereas the Florida Council on Compulsive Gambling and the Florida Department of Health Resource Center invite all residents of Eatonville to participate in Problem Gambling Awareness Month. And whereas the town of Eatonville is elected officials and citizens are encouraged to participate in activities that raise awareness, declaring the importance of Problem Gambling Awareness Month. Now be, therefore, now therefore be it resolved that the town of Eatonville, Orange County, Florida, along with Mayor Angie Gardner, Vice Mayor Rodney Daniels, Council Members Theo Washington, Marlon Daniels, and Wanda Randolph, pro proclaim the month of March 2023 as Problem Gambling Awareness Month in Eatonville, Florida. In witness whereof, I have a hearing to set my hands and cause the seal of the town of Eatonville, Florida to be affixed this seventh day of March 2023, Angie Gardner, Mayor. Veronica L. King Talbert. Citizen participation. We have Jane, um, pardon me if I mispronounce the name, it's Jane Hirsch. Mayor Gartner, ladies and gentlemen of the council, good evening and thank you for allowing me this moment to int introduce myself. My name is Jane Hirsch and I attended last week's town hall meeting here where I had the good fortune to sit alongside Councilwoman Randolph, meet her and um, ask for a meeting after the, the town hall to talk about what and where and how to best use my skill set for the good of Eatonville community and then I sent her my CV. Madam Councilwoman suggested I attend this evening to take that next step. I'm a writer, editor, marketer by trade and work experience. My husband and I have a mom and pop nonprofit where we've worked in the Central Florida area for over the last decade, developing holistic programming for the community called Toolbox for Life. COVID forced us to pivot and think outside the box and still adhere to our mission to build stronger communities. So while I've been creating, correcting, and completing contract work for a number of companies, I've also reached out to some very specific nonprofits and startups to offer up my superpowers to free them up to concentrate on their own. I'm not trying to take away anyone's job. I'm just good at what I do, and I'm merely volunteering my services. Perhaps it's to help write grants to make that playground that was talked about last week happen, or it's... Um, bringing together folks to move somehow something somewhere and move the needle a little bit. Perhaps it is just writing and editing for promotional purposes for the community. My hope is to commit and offer up a service that would be actually useful to the community and by doing so help um, rise the tide that lifts all boats. So thanks. Thank you. Uh, the next one we have is Angela Johnson.
Good evening, Mayor, Council Members, fellow residents of the historic town of Edenville. Um, I w one wanted to, at the last meeting, was did not have the opportunity to publicly thank um, Mayor Gardner, Councilman Marlon Dan Daniels, Councilwoman Wanda Randolph for coming out to the last community meeting for the Catalina Park Community Group. In addition to publicly thank um, Councilman um, Theo Washington for actually coming out to our cleanup day on Saturday, February the 18th. Um, I also like to stand before you and <laughs> publicly thank one of our fellow residents, Ann Dawkins, who resides in the, uh, the part of Catalina that is still um, Orange County, but recently received the passing of a, they're going to be street lights. Mm. Long story short, there I think there are going to be six street lights that are going to be installed after November the 1st? Yes. After November the 1st along Samuel and Hungerford. So I'm going to ask you all to really applaud her efforts because she actually went door to door to solicit the appropriate signatures to get that approval for that for her neighborhood. So, thank you. And then I would like to invite you all out to support the Catalina Park Community Group. We will be having a um, cleanup on Saturday, March the 18th, and then I will welcome you to come out and participate with our residents as we do a, a community-wide yard sale for any member of the community that wants to set up. Um, we're going to do a 50-50 raffle that day because obviously starting up this community group, there are some financial um, needs that need to be met, and so we're hoping that you will participate in our 50-50 raffle. Um, we look forward to seeing you guys out on March the 18th and the 25th. Thank you. Um, we have no more. Good. Our next item on the agenda is public hearing items. Approval of first reading of Ordinance 2023-2, amending Ordinance 2020-9. Ordinance 2023-2 and Ordinance of the Town of Edenville, Florida, amending Ordinance 2020-9 to repeal certain provisions only, providing for conflicts and providing for an effective date. All right, so the motion is on the floor to appro approve Ordinance 2023-2. You said it's public hearing? I'm sorry. Item is open for public hearing. Thank you. Is there anyone wanting to speak on this item? There being no one, we are being closed. There's some discussion for you guys and then a motion. And now it is open for council. Thank you. Is there anyone, is, want, anyone in the council wants to speak on this item? So, Mayor, Council, residents, the reason um, this ordinance um, was brought back towards us. Um, I had a great talk with uh, Attorney Shepard. We have plenty of ordinance and resolutions that's in conflict with each other, and that's why we constantly have um, issues when they come down to trying to get things done. So um, in doing so, I'm trying to go through a process now, cleaning those processes up to make it more effective, and then it's accountability. We have so many things that's conflict, and so that's why this um, ordinance amendment was uh, put in. Anyone else? I have a, so it's conflict, but this this resolution will send this resolution. I mean, this ordinance that's make it non-conflicting. Um, I'm trying to um, because the other one, twenty, the one you were peeling, I mean, this is just one page, and the other one's doing a lot, saying a lot of stuff. So let, let me let me help you. Um, if this is the one, I, I, I don't have the, a piece in front of me, but I believe by number that this is the one that was the budget ordinance? For correct. Okay. So what happened there, Mr. Washington, is when I was asked to review it by uh, Councilman Daniels, um, uh, it, it turned out that there were provisions in it that you won't, don't ordinarily see in a budget amendment or a budget ordinance for the simple reason that you do those every year. And so if you were going to have things... Uh, like, for example, Section 5 Procedures for Administration or Section 6 Fiduciary Oversight, those kinds of things would be 
a separate ordinance altogether applying to every single budget, not just this one. And so the, the, uh, the whole idea of a budget ordinance is how much we're going to spend on a given thing, not who's in charge of controls, how many checks are, uh, how many people are going to sign on the checks, or any of that stuff. So uh, in this particular thing, the reason it wasn't an overall repeal is you do not want to repeal the budget ordinance for that year, but there are provisions that you may want back. You may say, hey, we like that stuff, then we do it as a separate ordinance, and now going forward, henceforth until you change it, these are the rules we're going to apply. But where it was is the problem for this one and why it's an amendment and not a repeal. Anyone else? <coughs> All right, so we have a motion. <clears throat> I would like to entertain the motion to approve the first reading of Ordinance 2023-2. It's been moved and second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Next item, approval, approval of first reading of Ordinance 2023-3, repealing Ordinance 2021-4. Ms. King. Ordinance 2023-3, an ordinance of the town of Eatonville, Florida, repealing Ordinance 2021-4, providing for conflicts and providing for an effective date. This item is on the floor for discussion. If there's anyone that would like to speak. Seeing that there be none, we close the public portion of this item and it's now council. Would anyone like to speak on this? So same thing as stated before. Um, also, in this um, ordinance that was done in 2021-4 um, was inserted in the was organization chart. With organizational chart, which should be done through a resolution being put inside this ordinance, if there was any change to the um, the organization, it couldn't be done because it was already in the ordinance, so we would have to go back and take it out. So that's another reason why of, of doing so. As well, a lot of the stuff um, is discussed in the, in the charter. So you start looking at the charter, it's like some of the stuff was balancing and going against what the charter says. So that's why this repeal is in for them both ordinance 2021. Anyone else? All right, there being no more conversation, approval, motion for approval of first reading of ordinance 2023-3. Mm -hmm. It's been moved and second, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. Next item, approval of first reading of ordinance 2023-4, repealing ordinance 2010-4. Ms. King. Ordinance 2023-4, an ordinance of the town of Eatonville, Florida, repealing ordinance 2010-4, providing for conflicts and providing for an effective date. This item is now open for discussion. Anyone like to speak? Seeing that there be none, public portion of the item is closed. Council, is there anyone like to speak on this item? Um, same as before, but one of the main reasons was section five of this ordinance stated that the current fiscal year general fund contingency, uh, contingency reserve level do not to be budgeted annually. Um, for me going back, I haven't seen what that was budgeted annually. A hundred thousand plus contingency reserve to be available for use with town council approval during the fiscal year. A lot of these things I think were put into ordinance with great intentions, but we did not follow the rule on them, so I think um, I will begin with Attorney Shepherd and coming back with an ordinance that will be um, suffice to go along with our practices and everything else. Is there anyone else? All right, so is there a motion to approve first reading of Ordinance 2023-4, repealing Ordinance 2010-4? It's a minister second. It's been moved and second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? The next item is the approval of the first reading of Ordinance 2023-5, formerly Ordinance 2022-3, pertaining to businesses in the town of Eatonville Code of Ordinances, concerning the registration and operation of rental homes. Mrs. King. Ordinance 2023-5, an ordinance of the town of Eatonville, Florida, 
businesses in the town of Eatonville code of ordinances concerning the registration and operation of rental homes providing for applicability of providing for registration, inspections and fees, providing for required postings and notice, providing for interpretation and enforcement, providing for conflicts, providing for severability, providing for inclusion in the code, and providing for an effective date. This item is now open for public. Seeing that there is... Uh, do I have to sign a decision? Not for these things, no, sir. Well, as far as the rental... Can, you, can I come to the court, please, sir? Thank you. We need to be able to hear you. Okay. Okay, I'll try to speak loudly. Uh, I'm Julius Dix. I live on the west side of town on Washington Avenue. And I've heard a lot of discussion about a rental ordinance. One of the things that I heard is that we don't know how many rental properties do we have. That's why we need to know. I don't think that's a very good reason to come up with a rental property ordinance because the property owner is responsible for all the rental property. And we already have an ordinance to say the property owner is responsible. So why would we need another ordinance to find out how many rental properties? The owners that we have out here are responsible for the rental properties. So I just don't feel to develop a new ordinance when we have present ordinances on the book is necessary. We've got a lot of other things that we can do rather than waste time developing a new ordinance for rental properties. Unless you can let somebody know a lot of property problems with rental properties, I don't know a lot. I've been out here since 62. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? And if there's no one, <coughs> if there's no one else, we're closing the public section of this item. It now goes to the council. Is there anyone who'd like to say anything? So, Attorney Shepherd, have you reviewed yes, this latest update? We've actually reviewed it uh, several times. <coughs> Excuse me. Anticipating, anticipating the question, I ask at least one of your favorite one of your favorite lawyers, uh, Mr. Schumer, who reviewed it, um, and asked him if the strike throughs were his, and he said yes. And I asked him if he thought it was a passable ordinance, meaning enforceable, and he said yes. And he also said it would be difficult because of the need of staff to be able to do it. But in terms of its what it says, that it's an enforceable ordinance and. Uh, and can be passed uh, and, and defended and defensible. Um, and that's as much as I'll say, unless you want me to explain why I think it's probably a good idea. Well, next question for you. Is, is this ordinance towards a magistrate or board? Well, right now, your process is a board. So it's not, the ordinance itself doesn't get to decide that. Your own town procedure does. But if you ask me which I think you should uh, gravitate towards in the future, it is definitely towards a magistrate. But there's expense involved with that. But there's also certainty of quality of result with that. So um, that's that's kind of the trade-off. Um, Mayor or staff, um, answer. Do we know how many rentals are in question right now? Um, one of the things, one of the part of the information um, I thought I stated the last time was looking at the uh, website. It says it's about 854 units, but we obviously won't know until they're all registered. In addition, the rental is in, is increasing. In 2019, there was like 43% owner-occupied. Now it's, we're like 38.5. So rental properties are increasing. One of the other reasons that we should look into this, I know this is a little more than what you asked, but there are tenants that are having problems. And this allows some way for us to at least kind of ascertain that they're living in conditions that are reasonable. Um, and when I think about this ordinance, I think about single parents, not just moms, because there's more dads now um, as well, but if someone's going to rent a home, if they don't know 
if, if you are renting a home and you, you have no place else to go, then you should at least be afforded the opportunity to live in, a, in safe housing. Um, I know that we've, we've driven past homes here and we've wondered, <clears throat> is someone living in there? And in some cases, it's a rental property. Some cases it isn't. And in some of the, the homes currently, they are subdividing into rooms. You know, th there should be a way to register, and, and I think that um, just a prudent measure would be to pass an ordinance that helps us reach out to those tenants that are are in need. So, um, you said 800. You said 854 out of how many? Out of how many homes in? Oh, correct. I, I just have about, it's, it's about 854, 854 rental units. I, I don't have that out of how many. And, and we got this information from what? I mean, I simply, I Googled and I, I just kept looking. I mean, it could have been a government website, but I just wrote the information down. Um, I, I know you just put emphasis on um, homes, but if, if we want to be fair and we're going to do right about it, it's not just homes. It should be apartments, town homes, hotels, motels. It should be everything. We should have code enforcement and have everybody going through held to the same standard, not just a, a rental property, but everyone. Correct? A house would be a single family um, detached unit. If I live in a motel room or a a rooming house or a single family detached is my home. That's what I meant by home. So we don't care if a multifamily is not held to the same standard? Well, we've had this conversation a while back and I believe that hotels and motels, they fall under a whole nother category. Correct me if I'm... No, in fact, if you look at the definition which is found in 12-70A, uh, it says the provisions of this article shall apply to rental homes, which include any dwelling or group of dwelling units as defined below, including those units in a single family unit, a condominium, which is multifamily, a cooperative, or mobile home. It specifically excludes uh, hotels and motels, which are regulated under an entirely different state statute and have motel and hotel taxes and so forth. So most of the things other than apartments that you mentioned would be covered here. And again, apartments are kind of a different animal too because they're designed to be rented uh, by a landlord and there's a, a whole set of processes that apply to those as well. But again, even apartments are regulated to, this, to the town's code. So broken windows, uh, inadequate parking would have to be uh, up, up to code, you know, the pools would have to be safe, those sorts of things. So there is not that apartments are unregulated, but everything else that's not an apartment or a hotel is covered by this ordinance. What is our um, finan financial implications of passing the ordinance? Well, th there is going to be some influx of income. I don't want to put a great number on it because registration will require a fee, and the fee is to help you monitor and keep track of the things that, that you're going to keep track of. Um, but, but the monitoring thing is not insignificant. And one of the things that it can tell you to, to help you try to address a, a, a potentially upcoming problem that may not exist yet but certainly could um, is illustrated by the uh, incredible popularity of Airbnb. Um, it is a, an area where uh, a person with means can come in and buy up multiple homes um, for what relatively low prices, fix them up and put buddy pictures on the internet and have people in and out of there all the time. And you would love to know who those people are that are doing that in your community. Uh, so you can keep track of what kind of uh, places they're renting and what they're doing for the town, but also because um, one of the things that came up in the Hungerford discussions, and that's a, it's just a great frame of reference, I'm not trying to pick on Hungerford, but was the community saying, they're going to build these houses, we can't even afford to live in. Well, if you have an influx of Airbnbs, which are rental properties that now become much more valuable, then you're going to have a similar effect, right, because of the house that could be bought for 150000 because of its rental income can sell for 350000 and so on and so on. And not all of that's bad, 
But it's something you need to be aware of, and that's where the registration will help you be aware of it. Um, next thing, this is enforced by what board? Uh, well, it's not enforced by a board. It's enforced by code enforcement officer if you're going through that process, and, and it would be brought before for proof of, uh, or lack of proof of a violation before currently a board, and if you change in the future before a magistrate. Code enforcement board? Yes. Okay. And so the enforcement would be, although not always, sometimes you have a designated code enforcement officer who is, that's their job title. But in other jurisdictions, they'll take a particular police officer and say, part of your responsibility is also as code enforcement. And maybe that's for the next year or maybe it's for the next six months. They train them up on how to go and do it and then they take care of putting together the cases and do the violations. So I don't know which way that the city is or the town is going to go, but that's typically what it is. And like I said, what I mentioned that I'm a code enforcement magistrate in Kissimmee and there they have like three or four officers that go all over the city and you know write up violations, take pictures, send out notices and all. It's a full-time job. And it might be a full-time job here. I simply don't know. Um, but that's how it's done. So the officer or officers present the case and the evidence. Either the code board or the magistrate hears the evidence, examines the code and the evidence, listens to the party who's being charged or uh, is being complained against, and then determines, okay, there is a proven infraction here or there's not. If there's a proven infraction, we're going to levy fines or not. We're going to give you X number of days to cure if you don't cure more fines and so forth so but the beginning part of the process your question who's the enforcement person it's whoever y'all designate as a code enforcement officer <coughs> may i speak please yes okay thank you uh, yes i review the uh ordinance actually i really believe that we do need to have something like this in place this has been in the last almost a year this has been uh brought before the council, this is probably at least at least the fourth time, I would say, within a year. And uh, with the rising um, need for rentals, something really needs to be done. And I, I do agree that uh, we do need to move forward with this. Uh, I do have some concerns, though, about it. Um, it seems like, based upon the requirements of these documents, it's going to require a lot of work for someone to really manage this. So um, from what I can see right now, the code enforcement person would basically be in charge of a lot of the issues concerning the violations. Um, this seems like this may be like a whole department of its own, just counting that just with uh, one person. So with all the requirements and with the education components, of the landlords or the owners that would have to go through some type of education. My question is, who is going to provide that type of education and what type of um, educational components are we going to use? Um, I know that um, Orange County, uh, they are putting something together, maybe it's already together, like a bill of rights for tenants. So we need to make sure that we have all of our uh, requirements for tenants as well as homeowners. Um, also, my concern is that um, I did see in here that um, this is not applicable to hotel and motel because they're under the Department of uh, Professional Regulations uh, under those guidelines. So they are exempt. The Airbnb, would that be inclusive? Well, it's a real, I mean, you know, if I bought a home in Eatonville, I could immediately start listing it on Airbnb and have people as, as fast as they can come in. And again, a lot of, if you've ever paid attention to Airbnb, a lot of it is the pictures and how they make it look. And so if it, it, sometimes it's exactly the way it looks and sometimes maybe not so much. But at any rate, once you've driven from wherever and you need a place to stay and you show up, you're not likely to turn around and go away. And so it's become a real um, opportunity for people to make substantial money. It, use an example which has been in the news recently, and you may or may not have seen it, uh, but I'm aware of it for a lot of reasons, not the least of which is my son has a unit here. There's a place downtown called the Jackson. It's a condominium. And three brothers um, who have been named in the media, but I won't name them here, uh, have bought up enough units to ha now have the majority of units there. And th if you don't know about the Jackson, it has no amenities. So there's no pool, there's no tennis courts, there's no workout room. It's a very nice condo, but there are no amenities. There's an elevator and a lobby, and that's it. 
and those guys have been uh, charging assessments significantly for reasons that we don't really know why, and it's because they want the entertainers to be forced to sell more to them because they're on the Airbnb market, and they were renting them uh, on various places for exorbitant rents because for short term you can get a lot of money and make a lot of money out of having them. And so if you have capital to begin with, you can really wreak havoc, which has happened. So now you have investors, these three guys, that have a majority of the units and are voting in such a way to force assessments on people who are, were already paying a lot of money in mortgages and so forth and trying to get them where they're squeezed to the point where they have to sell and they have built into the documents a first right of refusal so they get the first right to buy the property. So there's a whole lot of things. And that doesn't apply here, but what it tells you is the Airbnb thing is a real issue. And you can see how in a place, given your central location, to literally everything that matters here, this would be a target. And this does ask for the type of rental you have. Yes. Um, and also, um, uh, let me just uh, finish this. Um, the code enforcement officer, we have to, we must get one in place. One that is, which is qualified to do the job. Now, the other concern is that it says in, in the right up here, the language, that this goes into effect 30 days after we approve this. Is this correct? Yes, and that's so you can provide notice to the owner uh, of its applicability so they can get time to come in and register. Yeah. Okay. Now, who's going to be, that's the other question, who's going to be responsible to make sure we have all the proper forms in place to be completed by the property owners? Uh, how are we going to get the notices out to everyone and, you know, the addresses as to who those uh, targeted um, individuals are that has to come in to the town or apply for an application. Someone has to be responsible for that. So I see this is going to create some some uh, occupation for someone to, to handle this appropriately. Yes. <clears throat> um, Attorney Shepard, yes, um, in reference to having, and there was a reason why I asked you the question of who, and you know, that was from the conversation that you and I had. Mm -hmm. um, can you let everybody know what the ramifications of not having the proper assets in place if something like this passed and somebody become grandfathered in, then what are we facing? Well, if you mean by access, trying to get into the place to inspect and so forth. Um, you know, obviously you can't just go in because you want to. Uh, but a registered, one, once you have applied this ordinance properly to, to those who are involved in the rental business then and the registration, then that's part of the rights that you gain. Um, but even still, you just don't show up at somebody's door, rental or not, and say, let me in, I'm going to inspect. But it gives you certain rights that you otherwise don't have, and that's part of the reason for that an ordinance like this would be helpful. But but again, I don't want to make it sound like it's a panacea or a cure-all because it's neither of those things. But what it is is a way for you to see trends that are happening in your community before they overwhelm you. And it also, as it was mentioned by the mayor, opportunity to make sure that those who are... Because I, I, my mindset is worried about the really short-term rentals. But, but the mayor... At, at, for good reason, is also talking about those who are not necessarily short-term, who want stability, want a place that has certain standards and is left up to, and particularly where if code enforcement is the only element, a lot of times that's an interior thing, that's an exterior thing, what you can observe. A broken window, the grass is too high, the fence is falling down, it needs a coat of paint, the, the, the roof needs a patch. But th there can be inside elements that are equally bad. Um, and you have to have a way to, to address those as well. And so this is something that puts you on the path to trying to do some of that and gives the people who are renting an opportunity to come back to you for, hey, you know, this is the situation, man, I've got pictures, here's what's going on, and, and see what you can do there. Um, but again, <coughs> none of these things is perfect. And one of the things that I mentioned, and it bears repeating given what Ms. Randolph observed, because this is exactly what uh, Mr. Schumer said, which is, it's enforceable and it's defensible, but it's also going to be a lot of work, and I don't know who's going to be able to do all the work. I don't know either. 
um, in terms of where it probably starts now that we have a CAO is for him to try to figure out how to use the, uh, the, the resources that he has at hand and come back to you and say, yeah, we need X. Well, maybe we don't. Maybe there is that person in the police department right now who can do this. I don't know. Uh, or maybe you want to hire somebody and then send them because there are, you ask about training. There are a number of code enforcement courses out there that teach you how to be a code enforcement officer. Um, and you get certified, there are certified code enforcement people, and they tell you about, they teach you about what due processes and what notices and what pictures you got to take to prove your case and how you prove the case and all those things. Because, again, if I have a violation and I say, hey, I saw a broken window, well, that's easy. But now, just like anything else in law, prove it to me. Well, how do you prove it? Well, I went there on this day. I took a picture. I sent a notice. Here's the code section. I went back th three days later. It was still there. They didn't respond. I knocked on the door. I posted it in the yard, et cetera, et cetera. And then on the day of the hearing, I went back there again, and it's not fixed. And why that's important is because the whole idea of code enforcement is you want them to fix it. And, and so you, if you don't find them for what they had if they fixed it. You find them for what they still have on the day of the hearing if they haven't fixed it yet. That's the idea. Good segue, and I was actually coming to Mr. Presley. Um, from looking at this ordinance, Mr. Presley, um, how many more code enforcement officers do you think we're going to need? Currently, right now, from reviewing the uh, steps to make this uh, into an implementation with staff, we, we just recently hired one code enforcement officer. Of course, he has to be trained and uh, uh, set into position at that point, uh, which I'll speak on later. But uh, we will need at least three officers to efficiently uh, run that. My my early observation is to speak with Chief and PD to have some uh, overlap in that area to assist until we uh, have uh, reviewed the budget and found the funds to be able to hire the additional officers. Will we also need administration or clerical person to be able to assist with this? I believe we have um, some administrative uh, assistance that we'll be able to pull from our, our permitting side. So it's just a matter of once everyone's trained and understand the process of it, we should have enough of them. Uh, it may be a part-time position, but I can't see it working a full-time position just for clerical for the uh, code enforcement force. So if this was to pass tonight, you think by the second um, hearing that we can have some kind of financial implications of what it will cost or what kind of impact it's going to have on the budget? Possibly. It, and within the next two meetings, um, we've already started pulling the documents together based off what this ordinance would implement to see where we're going to stand on that. And um, as I get that information together, I'm going to send it back to your council to proceed from there. So you don't know for sure if there'll be a vote by the next Not that next year. Not the next council meeting, but the, the, the next hearing of the second. By, by the second hearing, which, which was supposed to be the next meeting. So could, could we change it on the, the next meeting to give staff enough time? Oh, you can you can set a second reading for whenever you want. Right. Yeah. If we could extend that, that would give me more time to find it. So for me, I would say we would need more time because we keep saying that we have budget implications going on overall in the whole town, and you're saying three officers and they make it with average salary, uh, seventeen hours. So the total for the year is about what thirty eight forty thirty eight. So we're talking about adding an extra 80,000 just in that, where's the money coming from? So I would love to know if we would pass this, where that's going to come from, and then any other budget implications that will go along with adding this new ordinance. Give me the second meeting in April, we'll have it. <coughs> okay. But I guess the question for me is, it's not, we might need that number of bodies to get it up and going, but everyone doesn't rent at the same time. People leave and, and all that. So it's, it's the rental is once per year. Yeah. Um, the, so there, then we just need around that time of year, not continuously. Yeah, we're, we're confusing the year. apples and oranges a little right. bit because certainly this is going to be an aspect of code enforcement. But right. so is your entire building code. Right. So is your entire, entire nuisance code and so on. Mm -hmm. And so the, the, the code enforcement officers will certainly have a role in enforcement of this particular legislation if you pass it. But that is not going to be the only job. And, and part of a policy decision of code enforcement in various cities decided differently is whether the code is going to be, the code enforcement is going to be complaint based or proactive. Mm -hmm. Complaint based is exactly what it sounds like. Joe Citizen calls up and says, hey, my neighbor's got a car up on blocks. It's been there for a couple of weeks and I don't want to look at it anymore and it's a violation of the code. 
proactive is your code officers literally going around the neighborhood with a car and saying, broken window, uh, car up on blocks, uh, motor, in, motor in the driveway, uh, sh a shingle's falling off the roof, or whatever the violation may be, uh, weed's too high, and affirmatively going after it. And those are philosophical policy decisions, and I've seen it both ways. Some communities are absolutely only complaint-based because they don't want to be in the idea of going out in people's personal space and spying on them. But others say, no, we want this place to look spick and span, and we're going to go out there and look for this stuff. So that's a policy decision. And just because you start one way doesn't mean you can't go the other way, because I've seen that too. Right. And, and I know we just said, Mary just said it's only once a year, but as you stated before, it's more than once because if a tenant moves out or get evicted, we would have to go back into the inspection again, correct? You Before might, but yes, exactly. And it's a new, you have new rentals and that, that kind of stuff happens, so sure. But again, that's just, I can't say this enough, that's just one part of code enforcement. There's a whole lot of other stuff. So just just clarify, because I don't remember reading, reading that in here. If I am a landlord and I have my license for the year, if my tenant should break the lease within that year, I wouldn't necessarily have to re-register that. You may not have to re-register, but you may have to, I can't remember, I'd have to have right, the same But you may have to say what, whether you, I've got a new tenant and this is the, the tenant's new tenant. going to do a walkthrough yeah. on their own. I don't see that the owner has to be registered because they have to... No, but the tenant might go through on inspection right. and say, hey, this violates, you know, what again, who knows right. how. It's, right. it's, it's, it's right. various Got people it. do things differently in terms of how they react. You know, ordinarily, if you're dealing with a new landlord, the idea is not to get mad at him on day one, him or her or it. The idea is we want to start off where we're paying rent and having what we paid for, and usually things go south after the light uh, fixture breaks or the pipe breaks or the stove isn't working and then they're not fixing it, or there's been a leak, and now the carpet needs to be replaced, and they're not, and that's when you're going to hear it. And that can happen at any time. And I had another question. When you stated about the how we would rather it's by um, complaint-based or whatever. Proactive, yeah. We, proactive, then we'd have to change our code enforcement policy. Not your policy, not it's how you enforce it. Let me give you an example that... But, that so would that be, that change being here or no, in our, is in no, other... That's a, that's a different level of decision because it would apply okay. across the board. Right. Mayor, so the mayor, that would be based off the style of uh, service. That's how we do it. Right, okay. exactly. So I'm just if, making sure. If you use your, your police chief as an example, I'm sure he could explain to you, we see speeders, we don't give all of them tickets, yeah. right? Uh, and because that's called discretion. And... On the other side of it, you could be like some cities like Waldo uh, up in up in the northern hemisphere of central Florida, which is a speed trap. Known well as a speed trap because they want to stop every speeder because that's how they pay for their government. <laughs> but that's the difference between proactive and complaint-based. Complaint-based, well, we have too much speeding in the right. area, so we're going to put a, a police officer out there for the next 30 days and write a few tickets and slow everybody down. Uh, proactive is we're going to have a guy every day because from these hours to these hours, we know we can make a certain amount of revenue. Right. Doesn't matter to me. Okay. That's a policy call. All right. What are the surrounding um, municipalities that have this same uh, rental ordinance? Anyone local? I don't know about this same one. I don't know. But many so have something so similar. Have something not many have something similar. similar. Yeah, and in fact, uh, on a different issue that's not and can't be sadly regulated today the, the way it used to be, uh, if you didn't have something like this, it, there's a possibility that in the future it would be regulated out of existence. By that I mean, uh, in a community like Ponce Inlet, what is very important to them is short-term rentals because they have a lot of people coming in there uh, for spring break or bike week or whatever, and, you know, they're there to party, which means if you're the neighbor of one of those units, then you might want to sleep and they want to drink and party and do other things. And what happened is, in its wisdom, or lack thereof in my opinion, the legislature uh, several years ago took away the right of communities like Eatonville or Ponce to add new restrictions that would outlaw short-term rentals. However, if you had such a restriction already on your books, as long as you didn't change it, you could keep it. It was grandfathered in. Similarly here, 
you have the ability to do this today, but the legislature could take this away next se session, or even this session if they choose to. It's a possibility but, right now. Point. Yeah, but typically, if you already have it on the books, they'll leave you alone. Not always, but that's typical. But if you don't have it, then that you've got nothing to be grandfathered, and if they said you can't regulate it because we're now preempted by the state, we're preempted by the state. So it's better to have something while they're still letting you have something before they can take it away from you. Okay. Anyone else? All right. So approval of the first reading of ordinance 2023 dash. Five. Is your motion moved? Mm -hmm. It's been moved. Is there a second? Second. second. It's been moved and second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Miss, Miss Kim, would you do a roll call? I didn't. Oh, I didn't hear it. Y'all heard it. You want to do a roll call? You heard aye. Oh, okay. You want me to do the roll call? If you heard, then that's fine. I just didn't. Hear. Is it you that made the minutes? Yeah, I, I didn't hear a name. No you didn't hear a name. Okay. I didn't hear a name. Okay. okay. So remember, if we if we didn't hear anything, then we need your vote. Oh yeah. Let, let, so, let's, but if you thank you. I'm glad you brought that up. I covered a, this. I was asking this, in, and I, I put together an email. The, the law requires an affirmative response and no you can't assume because you don't hear anything that it's a yes or a no you can't assume anything so if you're trying to get an accurate count and the person that matters the most in this regard is the person who's taking the minutes yeah. so if she can't verify that everybody voted a certain way then she needs to get, find out did Absolutely. you vote yes or no because yes. not voting is not legal and if they're not sure you got to have accurate minutes right so okay. if you heard if you're good I'm let me go ahead and do the roll call. Right, I, know I, I know I had it moved by um, Wanda Randolph and second by Marlon Daniels. And me. Yeah, and you? Yes, I, think. <laughs> I think I heard him first. Goes to the runner. Councilman Randolph? Yes. Councilman Daniels? Aye. Councilman Washington? Aye. Vice Mayor Daniels? Aye. Mayor Gardner? Aye. All right, move on to the, thank you. Move on to the consent agenda for item number one, approval of town council meeting minutes from February 21st, 2023. Move. So moved. Is there a second? second. It's been moved and second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? None. It passes. Approval of the, res of the biometric management contract is there a motion to approve the biometric management contract i move second it's been moved and second councilman daniels um attorney check have you had a chance to include this agreement yeah actually i think i made substantial edits to it okay or the version i got <laughs> which is this version okay <laughs> yes <laughs> correct okay right exactly um, That's the version I had. Yes. yes. So one of the lines stands in acknowledgement, on acknowledgement of the agreement that's not for the current operation contract. What is the operation contract? What's the feeling there, right? So currently you have two contracts. The first one is the uh, the operation side of things, which is keeping up with the monitoring portion. Now we're having the management portion added in. You know, recently we have the issues from uh, making sure that we had our quality water report. And so one of the, the areas that we needed to improve in was the management of that water and submitting the proper documents in a timely manner. And speaking with biometrics and staff, this was something that was requested uh, in 2020, 2018 uh, that never was done. So which led to uh, violations being with the DEP. So we need this in place because we do not have the proper staffing levels to do this with in-house. So one is an actual operation side, the other side is a management of that side, which is keeping up with the documentation of it, submitting those documents timely to uh, to DP, as well as doing any checks to make sure our quality, uh, the water quality within our town is uh, up to par. So how much is the operation contract monthly? 
the monthly operation, where is Mr. English? What is 1600. that? 1600. 1600 is, I believe, in this one. In, this is 14 operations and 18. 18 for operation. 14 for men. So $1,300 a month? Yes. And I think the other great thing about this is that if they see a small something that needs to be fixed, they can go ahead and make that. Um, Correct. This this gives them the daily monitoring portions of managing it to make sure it stays up to par. So they will be fixing it. If there's anything outside of the general uh, agreement with this contract, that would be brought before staff for approval before proceeding with any additional costs. All right. So then moving on to unless there are any other questions. All right. It's been moved and second. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed. It, it's approved. Approval of resolution 2023-04 appointing two new members, board members to the code enforcement board. Move on. If the move is there a second? Second with the second. Uh, second. So the second, council. Um, reason I pulled those out, one was because of the housing that we just talked about in that ordinance. Um, what is, how many people are currently on that board right now? Prior to the um, additional names and writers, three on the board, and this will give us a full board of five with these two additions. And now that was the reason I was asking because it's supposed to be five. When do we add up the two? The list that I was given had three that were still uh, concurrently within their terms. The two that we are presenting today uh, right here, are right here in your notes. And then we have an extra one. And then we have an additional one, one, which will be possibly an alternate. So we replace the one that was expired in November 2022? Well, we wouldn't do that yet, right? No. If, if the term expired in November 22, did we replace that person then? So we have three we have three members that's active now. Okay. We have two vacant positions. We received three applications. So, so what's being put before you today is consideration of those three applications. And I believe, um, Mayor, you wanted to present it as an alternate? There's an alternate, yes. yes. So we have three to consider today. Right. Yes. So, so who would you consider to be an alternate? That's what I'm saying. We need council to decide which two will join the board and which one will be the alternate. That's what we need council to decide. And Mayor, I need to read the preamble when you're ready. Are there any other questions? So, even though we're in the second round, okay. Resolution 2023-4, a resolution of the Town Council of the Town of Eatonville, Florida, to appoint two new members to the Code Enforcement Board, providing for conflict, severability, and an effective date. All right, so it has been moved and seconded. And I guess within this whole motion, we need to determine um, Councilman Daniels for discussion. So it's been moved and seconded. All right, right? I didn't hear a move or a second. Was it moved? I was second. I second. Yes, yes, second with discussion. the discussion. Yes. Okay. Moved by Ms. Randolph. Thank yes. you. Second by Mr. Daniels for the discussion. So okay, let me get clarity. I have Randolph and Councilman Daniels for the biometric management contract. Yes. Which there was an all in favor, mm -hmm. favor of vote. Now the uh, resolution, I didn't hear a motion in a resolution. Are you saying that it's the no, same no, people? It happened immediately as soon as you saw okay. that. It's okay. the same. And it was the same as the answer, Mr. Daniels, Councilman Long Daniels said second with discussion. And that's where we are. We've been, we've yes. been in discussion since it, it was. A, if you didn't, if you blinked, you missed it because it happened as soon as she announced it with motion and second. Mm -hmm. And I was probably writing my notes from the yes. previous yes. vote. Oh, right. yes. <laughs> So I guess my, my question, I want to make certain, since we're in the second portion of this motion, do we go ahead and determine, make the statement, who are the, who's on the board and who's the alternate? Well, somebody, how it would go now is, it, it would, or <coughs> how it could go, is that somebody would nominate somebody to be the member of the board, and then that would then get a second, and then all in favor. Then somebody that else would nominate, and by default, whoever's third is going to be nominated with no out opposition as the alternate. So somebody needs to move whatever name they want to move to be a member. That gets a second. Then vote. All in favor, aye. 
then go on to the next one and so forth. And so by default, whoever ends up in third position is going to be the alternate because you already have your two board members. Okay. All right. Yes, I'm going to say We're in a second. You have something to say? Um, yes, I do. Okay, you said that we presently have we have three members on the board. When do their terms uh, expire? I don't know the dates. I can't speak to that right now, but I can provide that to you after the meeting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Guess that's what I want to find out. Okay. I think. I think the question also is, who are those three members? Once we uh, finish here, I can make sure we send out an email with the current ones and their terms, and then the two additional ones. As a matter of fact, I can once they're give them the Okay. All right, so right now, we need to determine who will be on the board. Um, we have Mr. Mills, Mr. Jenkins, and Mr. Novak. I think, um, in all fairness, um, since we had two members, Mr. Ta Mr. Michael Mills, Mr. Michael Mills, um, and he properly turned his application one time, um, I think he needs to be considered as one of the members. Okay, okay. okay so here's what because we have the two applications in the packet originally, I mean, I just don't have any other way to do it. And then we received the third one after that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's an easy to go ahead and put the first two on the board, and then this motion would be for Mr. Novak to be the alternate. Yes. Um, that's a, you can do it all in one motion if that's what you do. Uh, yeah. Okay, so that is the motion that I'm putting on the floor. So the motion is to uh, nominate to the board, the two applicants who filed written applications prior to the meeting, and have the third person who put in the request after that time to be the alternate. That's the motion. Yeah. So you made this, you made this, this motion? And this you motion. Been, or you going to do another motion? It is. It, that's a, there hasn't been a motion on the floor that's been seconded yet. I'm going to second now. Yeah. Of, this, of resolution yes. 2020. So this is like that's an four. amendment to approve it with. with okay, with, with I got you. Yeah. So do I need to, so do I need to amend it to the resolution? Restate it. Yeah, I didn't see it. Okay, let me withdraw, let me withdraw the motion. Please withdraw your second and withdraw yours. Yes, okay. You're going to amend resolution 2023-4 to add an alternate to the board, and that alternate would be? Ryan Novick. Okay, Mr. Novick. Ryan, Okay. So that best be amended. I can fix the resolution. There's the motion. Yeah, we can go on the fly, we're good. So second. all in favor of the motion? I second. Wait. Oh, I'll move it. You'll second it. Yes. Okay. So it's been moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. Approval of resolution 20. You got that, Ms. King? I do. All right. Approval of resolution 2023-5. Ms. King. Thank you. Resolution 2023-5, a resolution of the Town Council of the Town of Eatonville, Florida, to appoint one new member to the Historical Preservation Board, provided for conflict, severability, and an effective date. All right, so is there a motion to approve Resolution 2023-5? I move. It's been moved and seconded. Um, same thing applies. Is this board, is this board fully Going to be fully um, stopped right now? This particular board has one vacancy. Okay. So this will be full with this appointment. So, what we told? Yes, it will fill. This will make it a full board. Okay. All right, it's been moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. Um, I want to thank everyone that has volunteered to be on the boards can't do it without you. Next item on the agenda is um, approval of resolution 2023-2, but I am asking to pull that, and here's why. You know, in the past, it's, the charter states that the, the office or the position of vice mayor fills in when the mayor cannot. 
Um, but as mayor, I, it has to be a little bit more than that. You know, the, the, the vice mayor should support. Because should I walk away, should I drop dead, dead in the middle of the street? But should I drop dead in the middle of the street? It is important to me that the vice mayor continues the work of the people. Yes, it's a political position. But we have several things on this table we didn't all agree. But they are things that will be good for the town. So I'm simply asking, the charter states that by the second meeting in March, then the vice mayor is presented to the council and then they confirm. So I'm going to right now withdraw um, the resolution 2023 at this time. And I am tabling it and then I'll bring it back in the next meeting. Um, the final thing, and this is one of the amendments I asked for in the beginning, I would like for the council to allow me to do a couple of things. One is to seek grant funding for the impact fee study. Impact fee studies cost money. But not only just for an impact fee study, but to seek grant approval or funding for a municipal plan that will include the impact fee, that will include civil engineering for Catalina and that flooding issue. That will include all a lot of the issues that need to be looked at comprehensively with an impact fee as well. So, and, and that's really all that I'm asking to, to get your approval, to move forward with looking for funding for that, and also um, to know that I am searching for someone to do um, the impact, and obviously any contract agreements is brought back to you for approval. But just to move forward to, to find you. I'm sorry. Wait, attorney. Yeah, I was simply going to say we we need to get things in order, and so the first thing that has to happen before we start funding a study is we have to authorize that we want impact fees generally. Yes. Now. We may not know exactly how that's going to look, but the first thing is for this council to say, we know we want impact fees. That's step one. Now we say, okay, we want them. Now we get a study. Yes. Okay. So in that order. Uh, Vice Chair. Attorney, going back to the uh, agenda, Yes. Um, is it up to the mayor's discretion to pull, or will we have to get council's decision to pull since the decision has been posted? It was her agenda item. I wish I could tell you I knew your past practices in this regard because you guys actually sometimes inform me of what past practice has been. But what I believe to be the practice is that the mayor, um, with input from council, controls the agenda, and each member, I believe, in the past, if it's not something that's been noticed as a public hearing where they've had to advertise and such as that, that it's been controlled by, if it's your item, then you get to pull it. I think that's true. If I'm wrong, I will be happy. If you, and if you want to give me a few minutes to try to see if I can find something in charter, but that's my recollection. Now, if, if we were doing a public hearing for an ordinance or a change in the comp plan or whatever else, different story. Mm -hmm. I think that's your policy. And that's why I remember happening in the past. So you're saying it can be pulled without the vote of the council? Well, I think it depends on the item. For example, in the past, and I'm, I'll use you as an example because I can't remember the things you brought, but it, several times you bought something and it's been on the agenda and you decided, I don't want to proceed with that item. I don't remember what those things are right now, but you know what I'm talking yeah. about. And so that's what I'm re referencing when I think that has been your policy. Um, and, and, it, and it's not a noticed item. It's not there's a public hearing uh, where it's been advertised or anything such as that. So I think that's been your policy. I don't know how exactly we ask the opinion of is it okay with this board? I'm, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. We always ask, is it okay with this board? Okay. If I pull? That's the way to practice. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't, I, again, I'll be happy to look for it if you want to give me a few minutes, but I'm not, I just, I'm going from memory here because I didn't anticipate yeah. this question. I have a question. Okay, well, can this same item be brought for the council by another council member? To be put on the agenda. Yeah, as long as the procedures follow it, as long okay. as the, uh, I mean, I think there's some time that the Miss King needs to get it on the agenda and so forth and so on. But 
I think that's accurate. All right. Not this item. Not this item can be. This come from the mayor. Well, it's a, it's appointment of a vice mayor. But the government it's government the mayor. I'll yeah. I, I'll look. Charlie, check the charter. Chart, yeah. I'll look. I mean, I, I, the charter states that by the second meeting in March, that I bring forth the vice mayor. Okay. Well, there's not a second meeting in March. We only have one. Or the is there, so it'll be the next one. The twenty first. Okay. If that's accurate, so again, I, I didn't right. anticipate that matter, but the, okay, good. Thank you. I'll tell you the answer right now. Page three. I'm sorry. Page three. Yeah, the vice mayor will be recommended by the mayor. So it, it, it comes from the mayor as a recommendation, elected by the town council annually. So whoever is going to be put up is going to be put on by them, and it's by the second mayor. So this specific type of item, as opposed to a policy item, it's spelled out under section 2.04 of your charter. Okay. Hold that document, um, attorney for some of for my council report. All right. Got it. Wait, but did we ever vote on the other one? What, what other one? The impact team. No, no, okay. we got sidetracked. Okay. <laughs> All right, so I would like to be able to, with the approval of this council, to not only seek, go ahead and seek the company. Right now, there is a rate and fee study being done on the public works side, but impact fees about more than that, number one. And number two, impact piece is a part of a larger idea, which is the municipal plan. So I am asking for the council's approval with their approval to move forward with finding funding for those for those items. Well no. approval to 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 get impact piece. <laughs> That's one. Yes. Number one. And then to seek funding for the impact piece That's study needed in order to present impact fees. Right. So, so that's two motions. Two. Yes, two, two motions. motions. All right, so the first motion is uh, the motion to seek impact, a study for the purpose of implementing impact fees. Uh, it it's actually would be a motion to keep it clean. Thank you. A motion that approves in concept the idea of adopting impact fees generally. And why I'm saying it that way is because, so everybody knows, you can vote yes for this and ultimately say no to the ordinance that will have the fees in them. You can ultimately say no to whether you have fees at all. You can say no to the rate structure that's put in and send it out for another story if you think the study isn't supportable. So this just gets the train rolling, but it doesn't mean the train can't be stopped. So generally speaking, if you approve the idea of looking at impact fees, Yes would be the idea to vote, and if you die, then no would be the vote. All right, so based on what Attorney Shepard just stated, do we have a motion to proceed? Move. Second. It's been moved and second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. So it's yes on the impact fees. The second is to move forward to seek out funding for the payment of the study that will be needed in order to implement impact fees. Mm -hmm. Second discussion. It's been moved in second. Yeah. Um Matt, you just stated that there's already a study being done. How is that one being paid for? The study that I'm referring to is the one through public works and that was approved in like two thousand and twenty one, I believe, and it was through USDA a grant that they had at the time. Yeah, it's really it's really not a fee associated with it. It was a small fee associated with the uh, with the uh, uh, Florida rule water. Florida rule water. Say again. There was a small fee associated. I think it was around three thousand dollars, but it's through the Florida Rural Water Association. <laughs> The Florida Water, Water Rural Solar uh, Association has, has uh, the ability to do a study for us at a minimum fee because they are uh, uh, an actual association that is used throughout Florida. Mm -hmm. So we were able to acquire that with them at a, at a discounted rate, which is 3000 or so dollars. Yeah, I think it was three thirty two hundred. if I'm not mistaken. But it's not a full, complete impact fee 
Is this water only, or is it water and water. sewer? It's just, I believe it's just water. just water. So in addition to water, if that's true, you'd need wastewater. If you want to do that, you'd need stormwater if you want to do that. And again, there's, I mean, this, the, the impact fees, there's a whole bunch of things that you can have impact fees. So the more you thousand about approved in 2021, correct? Yeah, it was in 21. Okay. So for the other studies that's needed, what is the amount that's needed? We have several quotes that um, we've looked at that the previous CAO had started doing some research on. Uh, I have not proceeded for to confirm those, only because we have not been given the uh, approval from the council to proceed to the next level. Those were just some ideas to kind of start moving towards that and see the costs. So I can't really give you an official cost until I get the approval to proceed forward with pursuing it. Okay, but just to be just to be clear, um, the request is going to include the impact fee, but also <clears throat> a municipal a municipal plan, you know, and the impact fees that will be under that. So, I guess so. Whatever Im impact fees will be needed will be a part of that whole the whole picture. So how much are we talking about? I mean, we don't have a specific amount, but I'm, I'll be looking for the funding. So that's part of what the request well, is. Well, you wouldn't have to request the funding there. So are, are you asking for it what, as an RFP, RFQ, or are you asking for the funding that's needed to suffice the surveys and the studies that need to be done? If I, may, I believe she is asking to pursue grant opportunities to fund the municipal plan, which would include the impact fee study. Based on the amounts that are coming so back. So, in order to come up with that number, I just need the approval that we are going to pursue it so we can't get those numbers to And how much time would that take? And is, is the reason I'm asking the question? The, the time to actually present back the or, actual or, amount? Right. Or do we actually just go ahead and pay for it because it's going to benefit the town? Because what you got to think about, we, we've been harping so much about development and all these different things. And you allow things to linger, then we're as the attorney chef. We just got done teaching a class prior to we put ourselves in a dilemma. If, if you're referring to the accountability of making sure that it is done within a timely frame, uh, that won't be an issue. I, I can't speak for previous, but we, we've already started the ball rolling, rolling, and looking at different options. But uh, in regards to the time frame, I can't give you a one until I actually have the approval to proceed. Then I can present back to you the time frame with the scope of work. But even with the time frame, you're now talking about two weeks. And if something is available between now and then, then the holdup is council. So, I mean, so we can definitely report back in two weeks, but hopefully by then, with your approval now, we can report back knowing that we have funding or, or not. So, either way, you'll get your information in two weeks, but it shouldn't stop just the approval, just to seek out the funding. So, and, and, and hear me out. I, I, I say it again, I'm gonna say it again. Okay. You're, you're going towards this a grant, trying to get a grant, and we understand what a grant process can take. I'm asking if we had to fork over the money and bring it out of contingency to pay for this, to go ahead and just get the ball rolling, what would it take? It could be up to 50000 if we do the whole municipal plan. If we're talking about um, just a portion of impact fees, because there are a series of impact fees, you could be talking about nine, ten thousand, 10000 depending on what, what the study is going to cover. It depends on which impact fees will be feasible to seek. So the, so the range could vary. If we did a small impact fee, just do a police, fire, Recreation, uh, including water, wastewater, and stormwater. Those items, we have some rough estimates uh, of around about fifteen to twenty thousand. Okay. If you're looking for the full municipal plan, that's where it could get into the forty to fifty thousand. So, are you saying you want to proceed for a contingency move? Is that what you're saying, or you want us to pursue? The, um, Y'all have it made up that y'all want to do the grant, so I'm going I'm to trust y'all's judgment on this. I think we need to bring both plans um, to the table, and we can make a decision if you can have that done within two weeks, 
And then that way you can look at the budget. I don't <coughs> know what the plan. No, uh, I was going by what Mr. Preston said about those two. You you were saying like one, one. You had two plans, correct? What you were speaking on? I was speaking of there's there's phases of impact fees. Okay. So if you went with a portion of it, <coughs> which would include the name, the items I named, parks, uh, police, fire. There's a range of roughly fifteen to twenty thousand to produce that study. If you're looking what the mayor is speaking of in reference to the full municipal plan, that could be a higher range. So I guess you're asking if we could bring, bring back actual numbers before the council to proceed forward. Which Absolutely, one? yes. Okay. We'll be able to determine what we feel that will be the better needs for the town, and then we can look at uh, funds from contingency or maybe other line items that, uh, that has a potential to help so, uh, offset the cost. So are you just, oh, excuse me. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry. still talking. Yes, because I still believe <clears throat> if we have a developer to come in here and we don't get through this process, but they apply, have an application to apply for some type of development, then we're stuck again waiting for funding from a grant. So I think that's what Councilman Marlins was trying to say. Let's just go ahead and just work it out and go ahead and provide the funds rather than trying to wait on the grant because that's just stalling progress. And then we're back to where we started. Councilman, Council, if you want a plan in two weeks, whether I apply for a grant tomorrow or next week is not going to hold up if you decide in two weeks to go forward with paying out a contingency. What I am asking is to go ahead and look for funding. You'll still get your plans. But in two weeks, not only would you get your plans, I might be able to say, hey, and this is how we're going to pay for it. It's not going to hold up anything. If, if anything, it's going to speed it up if I'm able to get funding between now and the next meeting. I'm simply asking for your approval to go ahead and look for funding. Oh, absolutely. That's what I'm asking. Yeah, go ahead. That's what I'm asking for right now. It's not going to hold anything up. Okay, fine. Move forward, ma'am. Okay. 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 Well, uh, you, you just to clarify, though, I think from Mr. Presley's perspective, and I think these teams are two coexisting things that can happen and should happen at the same time because Councilwoman Randolph is making the point that if we have funding through a grant it we may have a, something in place in two weeks or may not but if we have a number if Mr. Presley can provide a number and the town as a policy decision says you know what it may take a couple of months but we want to get this thing on the road right now let's fund it right now what that will do is it gives you the option to then start the process faster and get to the point where you can get general or ordinance faster. Because again, think about it. We start this. Let's suppose at the next meeting we start the study. We decide whatever the number is. We bite the bullet. We're going to pay. So that, for most places, is going to put grant funding aside because grants don't generally fund in arrears. There may be some, but most don't. You, if you've already spent it, you ain't getting it back. You have to have the grant, and then you get to spend, and then you get it back. But you can't spend and then go get the grant. So that's typically the rule. But if you did it in a way that the funds come and get approved at the next meeting, whenever that is, then you can begin the process of finding the people to do the study, get them hired, get them working, and work towards an ordinance. Because once you get to that point and you get the study back, it's going to take them weeks. You know, is it going to take them six weeks, eight weeks, 20 weeks? I don't know, but it ain't overnight. And then you got to come back and you got two readings to get a pass. So if we started the next meeting, you're probably looking four to six months before you can actually have an ordinance. And think of how much development can be applied for between now and then. So both parties are right. It's fine to go look for the money now. It's also not a bad idea to figure out how much it's going to cost and if we want to bite that bullet sooner rather than later. All right, so yes. it's been moved. Yeah. It's been moved and seconded that I can look for the funding and can also seek, we can move forward with impact fees and municipal plan. Moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 
All opposed? All right. There's no other items. Mr. Preston. Yes, thank you, um, Madam Mayor. Uh, several things I wanted to bring to the attention of the council. Uh, over the last uh, few weeks, we've been having a lot of uh, analysis meetings with staff, reviewing practices, looking at current procedures, as well as seeing how we can uh, bring the municipal side of our town up to the 21st century. Uh, some of the things that are concerning, of course, uh, is our current policies and procedures for staff, job descriptions, uh, pay grades, um, as well as the structure of our hiring process, uh, which if uh, the council's acknowledgement and police acknowledge that we're working to create those plans through Fort Leap Cities and uh, with the help of staff to have better systems with that. Um, these different areas have not been touched in years or they've been added to, however, they have not been uh, put into a process where it is more efficient for staff to go out to talent and bring the correct staffing levels with the correct experiencing and so working uh, on restructuring that for the town and finding uh, best management practices through uh, different policies with that. Also, um, we are working to make sure we're running more efficient from our staffing levels. One of the concerns is staff work forward to council. Uh, so I'm just asking council as we're moving forward, if, if you do have questions or comments for staff, if you follow it through our office so we can make sure, one, that they're responding timely, two, that uh, we have record within our office before proceeding to staff uh, so they're, they're able to do it properly. Um, we're meeting with them bi-weekly now to kind of talk about accountability and making sure that we are getting the information to council as well as to our citizens <coughs> in a timely matter, working on our customer service skills as well in those areas. Uh, a few other things that I want to bring to our, your attention, we do have a cleanup day for our town coming up on March 25th. Uh, we're working with uh, Public Works and our waste company to provide several roll-offs that will be stationed throughout the town. Uh, also, there is uh, Representative Eskamani, along with Senator Thompson, that will be working with the chamber uh, to have volunteers and also have our CRA team working to find some other groups to help for that cleanup. Uh, the time frame we're working on at, at this point is from 9 to 1 p.m. Uh, we'd love to have council come out. We'll do a meet and greet and kind of start it up and staff will be working to do some cleaning up on that throughout town. Um, also, it was brought up at the last meeting about the quarterly budget report that hasn't been given to staff. Currently, we are working to find those. We have the actual detailed budget, and we will look to present uh, to council at the first meeting in April, the first and second quarter quarterly budget reports. And here forth, we'll have those on the regular agenda for those um, items for the quarterly reports. Staffing areas, we've lost uh, our planning planner one uh, staff member. She's moved on. Uh, but in the interim of that, uh, we have, uh, of course, our consultant group uh, with Ms. Tara that's working with our planning division, and she helps out tremendously there. We did end up uh, re uh, positioning the staff member from recreation over into admin per permit clerk. So we have a, a new admin permit clerk for our planning division that's come on board. <coughs> we do have a new code enforcement officer, uh, Mr. Rudy, that has been brought on to staff, uh, who started Monday and will be working along with and shadowing the current staff to learn our code enforcement process. And we did uh, hire a part-time CRA administrative assistant. So with that being said, we currently have six additional vacancies of full-time positions and three part-time positions that we're working to uh, codify and present that back and let you know that we're getting closer to better staffing levels in that area. Uh, we did have our kickoff uh, meeting with our work supply plan uh, being put in place, as Ms. Terrell was talking about earlier, great meeting. Uh, we should have the results and the updated study complete uh, based on the scope of work, we say August? Yeah. yeah. In August? Yes. So we'll have that uh, to present back to staff once we have that and add the additional amendments to our comprehensive plan. Uh, 
our mayor is also asking to do a state of the town address. We're working on some dates and we'll present that back. I believe we have some preliminary dates that we'll get to council for that. And also, uh, I'm going to uh, ask that we have a interview process for the chief of police. Uh, we reviewed the current applicants that were presented back in August. And I'd like to bring that back before the council to have a uh, group of stakeholders from the community along with council to interview the top two candidates that were presented. And then we will proceed uh, with hiring that and bring it back before uh, council to for approval. We'll get those dates to you. Uh, last thing I'll say in regards to uh, getting an impact fee in place, we must have an active and up-to-date CIP, capital improvement. Not only that, we also should have a strategic plan for the town. Those are items that we do not have, which would slow up the process for the impact. So with that being stated, I'm going to request that we have a town strategic planning session. Um, and I need some direction from council on some available dates in April to meet so we can present back to you <coughs> with a facilitator that will assist us in presenting a proper uh, strategic plan to the town uh, of some ideas based on community, town, uh, citizens' wants and needs, as well as the staff will be putting together a, a CIP list to present at that meeting as well. So um, any salaries <coughs> availability within April that council may can come and be a part of a strategic planning session. Thank I you. just need to know some dates so I can count. Oh, you want the dates now? Yeah. Uh, in, in April. In April. And the first two, one is Good Friday, the other is? Yes. Is Easter or Based off my weekend. Yes. So then it would be the next, the 21st, 22nd, 7th, and 29th. Or the 29th. Do you have any preferences? To those two Saturdays. You said Saturday? Saturday. It was a Saturday morning, I think. I prefer to do a Saturday morning just because we can pull a clear everybody in mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. have mm -hmm. enough time to be a facilitator as well as for yeah. yeah. council yeah. and residents to give input towards yeah. So can they um, take notes? Can they take notes? I just didn't know if those two dates would possibly work and then we'll finalize it if, if uh, council okay. approves. Do you know yet, council, Councilwoman Randolph? Do either of those Saturdays work for you? Would either of them work for you? April 22nd, 22nd or 29th? Yeah, 22nd. 20, 22nd. Perfect. Councilman Washington. Um, I have to let you know. Okay. Vice Mayor. 22nd. Okay. And Councilman Davis. Okay. All right. Sounds like we've got a consensus on the 22nd. Okay. All right. we'll, we'll get that day back to you, and um, also that's Earth Day, so we'll try to make it nice for you on that. Thank you for All your right. time. Okay. Attorney. God, I've talked a lot. Um, I want to tell you something, though, that I think will maybe surprise you, maybe even shock you, and that is that I've been practicing law for 38 years. I've been doing municipal law since 2002, as an addition to the other things that I do. Um, and I have never, ever been asked to nor given a training session like the one that I gave tonight, nor the ones that will be coming up, with the exception of the quasi-judicial and legislative, over the next uh, three sessions. And that's important because uh, it was Ms. King, I believe, who said this is something we should do and made it happen. And uh, I'm grateful for you doing that. And I'm also wanted to tell you that you should be patting yourselves on the back a little bit. It is often, as a government lawyer, that I see elected officials who do not know how to do the jobs they got elected to do because they've never had the training nor have they sought it out. So for those reasons, if no other, uh, this was unique uh, opportunity and I'm glad we had the opportunity to do it. Um, it's, it's a significant step forward for the town and your ability to deal with those who would otherwise come in and try to bully you around to know what it is that you can do and what it is that you can't do so that that can't happen. And uh, I'm really glad we took that step. And I look forward to the upcoming sessions as well, and hopefully they will be enlightening. And hopefully you all have more time to ask questions. We talked a lot, but uh, there's a lot to cover. So, and, and by the way, you can always shoot me an email if you have questions about anything you heard, and that applies to anybody who heard something. 
on the board that you authorized to talk to me, I'll be happy to answer it. Councilwoman Reno. Good evening, everyone. Oh, we had a very interesting uh, week. Uh, the whole week was just like every day was something to do. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say I started my week on um, last Tuesday, last Monday, um, just to try to introduce myself to County Commissioner Christine Moore. I did meet with her just for a short while, and we talked about neighborhood cleanups. I did mention to her some of the things that we're doing here in Eatonville, uh, in the county in the park area, and the town's coming together to do the <coughs> cleanup, so she was very um, helpful with that. Um, also, uh, she asked if we will continue to use the uh, neighborhood services under the county, uh, because they do have a lot of good resources. Um, also, on February the 22nd, <coughs> February, I'm, I'm sorry, in that same week, on that Thursday, we met with, I was concerned about the widening of the Kennedy Boulevard, and I've been hearing a lot about it, and I did speak to her about it, so she directed uh, me to the County Transportation Engineer's Office, and that particular day, last Thursday, uh, our CEO, Mr. Presley, met with them along with myself, and actually the project is going to start 2024. It will be a four-lane highway with a medium sporadically down Kennedy Boulevard, starting from Forest City Road. We have sidewalks on both sides of the road, and that expansion is going to come all the way here to Wymore Road. And also, they're going to have bike trails on both sides of the highway. But some of the concerns, and I did express this to uh, one of our neighborhood um, leaders, is that uh, I was concerned about the pedestrian traffic during the time of construction. Also, uh, there's been an uh, increased amount of people walking on both sides of the street down there. It can be relatively dangerous if you're not paying attention to people walking to and from. Also, uh, brought to their attention that there's going to be at least about 530 apartment units when these two developments of those apartments are completed. So I had a concern about that. Coming in, coming out, there's, from what I understand, um, Mr. Presley, they stated that there would be no, they did not put anything, any provisions as far as traffic lights coming in and out of those facilities in that particular area. So I asked Mr. Presley if we can just walk down there one day and just kind of do like a, a overview just by eyeballing everything, just trying to make sure that we can come up with something um, that we feel will be much safer for people. Because you're going to be looking at at least about six or 700 cars. Just with those two, that is based upon if everyone have an automobile. They have an automobile. You're looking at one automobile per apartment, or maybe 1.5 automobiles per unit, depending on how many people are going to be living there. So we do have concerns about, I do have concerns, and I think we need to be concerned about that. Okay, um, so I asked if they would come forward and do a presentation <coughs> to the town about the plans for this particular project, because it's going to last for how many years did he say? Was it two years? The project itself? Yes. It's going to, it won't be complete until 2028. So we're talking about a long time. And that is a major highway. That is the gateway to Eatonville. You know, Kennedy Boulevard. So we do have a lot of concerns about that. Okay, also, uh, administratively, I'm glad that you mentioned something about the police chief, um, because that was something that was on the table before about having a board of some sort. And for some reason, I found some, a sheet concerning the the position for a permit clerk. Has that been changed to planner? No. No? Okay. We I'm have sorry. a planner and we also have an administrative permit clerk. Permit clerk, okay. Okay, that's good. All right. Um, now, last but not least, um, due to the incident in Orlando where three people lost their lives about two weeks ago, I did attend the Pine Hills meeting last week and I came back and I informed uh, 
uh, Chief Jenkins about the outcome of the meeting. It was very good, very positive, bringing people together. There's a lot of issues in the Pine Hills area concerning young people, youth crime, and violence. That's the majority of the issues that they're having right now. So I gave him a couple ideas about what resources that he can use, and I asked him if he can do a presentation here in the town. Being from a town and living here with 2,500 residents, a lot of us may just take upon ourselves that nothing like that will ever happen in Eatonville because we're just such a small town and everyone knows everybody. We always have to be prepared for something like this, and knowing exactly what to do to protect ourselves. And if we see something, we need to say something. So I asked Chief if he can just, if you don't mind, Mayor, if you could just mention something tonight about your plans on what you would like to do for the community. Mayor, Council, and citizens, um, after I was contacted by um, Council Miranda, <coughs> I reached out to Orange County Sheriff Office Crime Prevention Unit, and we're going to uh, together put together a symposium for the town where the residents can come out and we can uh, inform them how to, to protect themselves, as well as address the uh, youth violence, the increase in youth violence. So we're going to bring that back, and we'll bring that back uh, within the next couple weeks for the next meeting to give you guys a date or the location on where we can have that at where it can be a question and answer then and also uh, someone reached out to me about helping out with um, gun safety. So we're going to uh, bring that as well. Okay. All right. The last that I have here is that there's a lot of emphasis and information on neighborhood services, cleanup. I won't be here on the 20th year because I have another engagement, but I'll do everything possible to um, contribute to the cost. These are, I just don't, don't take this the wrong way. But what we don't want to have is nothing wrong with cleanup. I'm all in favor of that. But a lot of times we don't have to keep reproducing, I mean, re, reduplicating the same thing over and over and over again. These sheets here were given to me by um, Mr. English when he went over all these sheets with me uh, sometime earlier last year. And this has everything that we need. If everyone picks up one of these sheets, you'll know exactly when to put the trash out. Household items. He says on Tuesday they can't sell 10 bags of leaves. Right now you can go down a lot of these streets and you see a lot of leaves on the side of the road. So if we see something, we can always do things ourselves to pick up the trash, bag up the trash. Also, um, the recycle waste, it's on Wednesdays. So if you pick up these sheets, they're a great asset and a great tool for anything to do with cleanup in our, of our, of our town. And uh, so he highly encouraged this. If you need any other questions about any other items, you know, he'd be more than glad to uh, assist you in any way he can. All right, thank you, and thank you all very much for coming, and thank you very much for being involved. Thank you. Councilor Washington. Thank you, man. Uh, thank you, everybody, for coming out tonight. But one thing um, that um, most city, um, most city does do on um, the vice mayor situation, uh, I will talk about that. The person with the highest vote be the vice mayor, so we can keep the politics out. Who be the vice mayor? So the highest vote getter between the council people at that election will be the vice mayor of that for that year or however we do it. We can put it implemented. But that's what some cities do, talk to some other cities. So we won't have this issue every time we come up that if the citizen really let the people know who they want to be the vice mayor by the vote getters. And with the youth, that's something that we need to concentrate on. The youth we need to get drum corps, we need to get mentorship programs. Um, this is something that's rampant in a whole lot of cities that's going on. We have to get some programs for our citizens, for our youth. We have to do something. I don't know where we can start at. It's up to you know this board or the staff to implement these things. You know the drum corps, the tennis courts, the tennis program, um, the majorettes, um, 
This is the kind of things we need to get in our community to get the use tomorrow. I see a lot of kids doing nothing. Um, I mean, just doing nothing in our neighborhood. And some of the good athletes could be, good cheerleaders could be, but we need to get it in their hands for them to do something with the leadership. So this is a task we need to take on of getting the Polish School program in. I haven't heard about that lately. Getting that started. That's the start. So with the youth part, this is something we need to task us. Our recreation, we have less. It's nothing to really do but when you get out of school like we used to do when we got out of school. You know, there's spring break. Well, that's not spring break coming. So what it is to do in the town of Eatonville. So that's what the task we need to be talking about up here legislatively. Getting things in our community for our youth and citizens and seniors and young adults like myself, you know, to get involved with other people. Walking trail, <laughs> you know, all that kind of stuff. There. You know, parks, get our parks at the park. You know, all these things. So this is something we need to look at as a board. Um, one day, like doing these meetings we have, we need to sit down and say, we're gonna hit, even with the board. I mean, that situation, you know, so that's all I have tonight, but um, thank you. Uh, Councilman Douglas. Um, first off, I want to say <coughs> to the women of the historic town of Eagleville, um, thank you for Women's History Month. It is Women's History Month. We just came out of Black History Month. Now it's Women's um, History Month, and we need to celebrate the the journey that our women have come forth in, in this in this nation, in this city. Um, a couple things I want to discuss on this evening. Um, first off, um, I'm planning a meeting on March, <coughs> excuse me, on March 22nd, 2023. Um, Julie and I have seen your email and there's a lot of miscommunication and not transparency going on, so I think that's key. But the reason I want to call this meeting on March 22nd is to outline some of those things. Um, in dealing with that, um, I talked to Ms. Tiffany Simmons, I know Ms. Randolph is planning um, Juneteenth. It's so crucial that we have programs and stuff in place for our community. Um, and it can't be last minute, just thrown together. The way we're going to win this battle is by collaboration. Um, we have to get out of these old stigma or the old, and let me just be candid with it, this old Eneville politics. We gotta get past this old Eneville politics and the old Eneville way of doing business. We have such a bad, a bad reputation of the way we conduct business and how people don't trust us with money and all kind of things. And I mean, if people don't want to admit it, I mean, maybe we need to leave outside of the, the, the streets of Eatonville and go to other communities and have these conversations. It's plenty of people that want to do advocacy work. It's plenty of people that want to bring money and want to do things, but they just don't trust us. Our own people don't trust us. Let me say it like that. And that's because we've done business so long for so long and the time now is to correct that. I've been saying it since I've been sitting here. So this meeting on March 22nd, um, actually I've been having several meetings with people who have influence, who have money, who want to do stuff. But you know what they say? You can make your mouth fried chicken, but you got to produce it. So we, we do a lot of talking, but we got we to gotta produce it. We got to produce strategic plans. We got to produce strategic initiatives and all that. That's what's needed to be done to move this community to another level. Um, there's federal money out there right now. I know we keep saying, hey, we can't afford to get a lobbyist or afford to get somebody. We have to. It's billions of dollars out there that we let pass us by. We talking about this water issue of 75 million coming from the White House and all that kind of stuff, being the oldest black municipality in the United States, we should have that 75 million like it ain't nothing. We should have tourism dollars like it ain't nothing. 
We should have all that stuff going on. But you know what? We got to get outside of the streets of Eatonville and we got to go where the money at. Like I say, you got to make yourself, you got to be at the table. You can talk all day, but until you get to the table and be able to prove what you need, that's what it's going to be taking for us to get to the next level. Um, I, I would encourage everybody, this legislative session that started today, we're going by a lot of smoke screens right now. But you need to look at some of these House bills and some of these Senate bills that's trying to be passed. That's why it's important to not only vote local, but it's also good to get to know your state representatives and your senators in this area. Because guess what? They can put money into the budget for us, but we gotta go have that conversation. And we can't be so arrogant that I think they're just gonna do it. The time out for us getting $10,000, $20,000, thinking that's some money, that's no money. We should be getting millions of dollars for this community, and that, that's what's gonna be taken. Um, public safety, um, as Councilwoman Randolph said, I, I've been saying it forever and day. We can't take it for granted. We cannot take it for granted. I've been in some of these meetings where the shooting that happened in my fields and just different things for my job, personally, and different things. We have to take it um, for what it is, and we got to put things in place. Um, Mr. President, I was glad that you brought up tonight about the police chief, and I'm going to divert for a little bit. And that's why I asked for you to keep the copy of the chart out because I actually had it talk about tonight. Page 2, 2.03, Section 8 states that upon within 120 days of a vacancy, we must confirm department heads. Department heads should be confirmed within 120 days. Do anybody know when the last time we had a permanent police chief here in the town of England? It should be done within 120 days. The politics is over. We got to think about the people. We got to think about the residents. Politics are over. Safety is important here in the historic town of Meanville. And if you don't think that we have targets on our back, we got targets on our back. And somebody, it's called a soft target. They're just waiting for that soft target to happen. And we can't be lackadaisical. We need to ensure that we fill this position. It's been over five, six years since we had a permanent chief, we gotta get this done. And it's not what Marlon Daniels said, it's what the charter says. It says within 120 days, department heads shall be confirmed, shall. And attorney shall mean what? It, it, it means what it says. Um, it, it reads a little bit differently, but yes, your point is taken. You, you, there's supposed to be an appointment by the mayor, but then it has to be confirmed by the town council. The question really is whether or not and I, because I know that, uh, that Chief Jenkins has been doing this for a long time, and I don't know the history to know how he got to the position, whether he was appointed and confirmed, and this remain. I, I simply don't know that. So, for all I know, this is complied with. But your the way it reads is what you said. Okay. We, we have to. We have to start. And I know is whether we like somebody, or dislike somebody. No, it's what the people need. Councilman Washington just said all these different things that's going on. Yeah, we need to do it, but we got to do things in decent and order. So, Matt, I'm, I'm asking you that we get a permanent police chief in place. Nothing against Mr. President. I had this conversation with him a couple of days ago. The last CAO that was confirmed ended January 29th. So from January 29th, we have 120 days. 120 days to confirm a new CAO. It's not fair to Mr. Presley to linger him alone. If we want to offer to him, let's offer it to him within those 120 days. If that's not the plan, put whoever, but we gotta do things. That's why we've been having a difference of moving this town forward because we don't have department heads and the proper people in place. We gotta do it. Um, my whole thing about this is, is people over politics. We gotta think about people over politics. And we got to move these things forward. Um, Juneteenth is coming up. I ask that um, Ms. Simmons and her group and Ms. Randolph come together, come back. During the budget time, I said we had these special events. We should have had a designated amount in the budget of how much was going to be 
given for Juneteenth. It shouldn't be sporadic of, oh, it's going to be 2000 or 5000 They should know what that budget is going to be to be able to fulfill a Juneteenth. We have plenty of corporate sponsors. We have people that want to come in. I'm, I'm telling you from conversations, we have people that want to come in. But you know what? Our hearts got to become right. Our hearts got to become right, and we got to work together to move this time forward. I mean, hear me. I, I want to, let's move this time forward, but we have to work together. There has to be transparency, and things have to move forward. Um, in reference to the impact fees, I was simply stating because me and Attorney Shepard have talked probably for the last two or three months on impact fees. I didn't want to put it out there, but I've been told that it's been handled by administration. So if it did come up tonight, I was prepared to put that motion out there because we have to move forward. If not, we're going to have developers and everybody else going to become knocking, and we're not going to be prepared. So if you're not prepared for the fees, you don't have a plate ready, guess what the food is going to be on the floor? But it's going to take us to do it, and that's my report. Thank you. Thanks, Good evening. Um, seeing as uh, possible, uh, Ray, I did one of the uh, code enforcement officers. I just asked that we don't include our police officers uh, because they, they're stressed enough. You know, if we can, uh, let's get that staff in there for code enforcement so that we don't have to bother them. I mean, we. I want to try to find more money for our police officers, and I just don't want to stretch them out or tax them in a sense. You know, we're dealing with code enforcement. Uh, we can, uh, well, then, uh, Mary, your report, can you give me the evaluation of the pool? We've had a gentleman that wants to help. Uh, Councilman Washington stated that we don't know the, uh, the condition of the pool. So I'm asking for, did we do an evaluation done to see where we are uh, on that? Uh, on the latter note, a uh, very informative town council, or not town council, town hall meeting, Representative Eskimani and uh, our good friend Chad McBarnes planned a uh, great town hall, uh, very informative about some of the bills that are being passed, had some very informative speakers, uh, and we have resources out there that would like to help us uh, in our quest to become a better, a better city, better municipality. Also, attorney, uh, Great presentation today about the comp plan. It just baffles me that we have competent planners, administration, and staff. Now, for lawyers to say that something was passed, and you know you had that thirty days to, you know, I don't, I don't get it. it could you just give me and write what was wrong? You know. Uh, because are you talking about that project? What other project you didn't want to mention? I sent you, you know? an email with all that detail, but I'll be happy to resend it. Yeah, all so, yeah, send it to me because it baffles me that a plan would say that this doesn't meet the comp plan, but still allow the project to go forward. Trust me, it baffled us because you know? I, it was one of the very first things that I was tasked with, and I was not expecting to find anything other than yeah, everything is done correctly, but it not it's not only not done. It's not close. It's not a hard one. It's right. an easy one. It, it's, it's baffling because of the, uh, I guess, the uh, confidence that we put in our administration right. staff. It, it, 100%. That is, if there's a takeaway, that's it. Because you have to be able to rely on it. So it's really important to get the people that know what they're doing and can prove it. And that's what we're trying to do every time we tell you this is how it works. Well, we we send that because, I, I, like I said, yes. find it no back out and, and hard that something like that could take place and we didn't catch it as far as yeah. planners, no station, and staff. Uh, thank you all for coming out. Have a good evening. Um, thank you, everyone. Uh, before I get started, I just want to say that Mayor Dennings, and he, you have the tourist development tax money that sits into an account, a trust fund, and it's spent. But he is asking for a citizen's advisory task, and he doesn't want elected officials. So I am putting that out there. If you are interested and you live in the town, please call uh, Miss Janita Robinson. You cannot be on anything that would re request money from the Tourist Development um, Council, but if you're anyone else and you are interested in learning how it all goes and, and advising 
the mayor on the county level, please let me know. Um, and I, I do need to know about Friday. I do need to know about Friday. And I, I haven't had it long, so this is the first meeting since I got the letter. But I, I definitely would like for us to be represented. Uh, and they meet in the morning time, like 11 o'clock. So from 9 to 11. So if you want more information, just get with me. What day? What day? What day? Um, the first meeting is going to be Wednesday, March 22nd from 9 to 11. And that's at the um, the BCC. Mm -hmm. yeah, thank you. Um, also, so just like if you just call six two three four eighty nine thirteen and speak with Miss Robinson, and she'll get that information to you. Again, I need to tell them by Friday. Um, the art, the I four project. I don't know if you 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 are aware of the I four project, but probably several years ago we received two hundred. 20,000 and 40,000 that was spent already. It was spent with the tower or somewhere. We have 180,000 left. And with that, the town has to do some sort of art project that can be seen, ideally seen from I-4. Um, when I got into office, we were already way behind. So, and I'm saying that to say this, the artist was to have been here tonight and I really was looking for him so that you can see a presentation that um, of a concept that has been submitted and I wanted you to see it so hopefully he can come the next the next meeting but then he'll be out of out of the country. But I and so I'm putting that out there the I for art project, it is in the works and you will be presented with the concept idea um, as soon as we can get him in here. The workshop, they already got um, compliments that they love the fact that, I mean, knowledge is power. Mm -hmm. You know, like I said before, the better questions you ask mm -hmm. us, the higher we have to step up our game. And that helps the town. <clears throat> in regards to any of the, the state of the town in Agro, I am trying to do it around April 21st, 21st which is a a Friday night, but that's going to be confirmed later. We had an arts and hair arts and heritage cultural and Heri arts cultural and heritage grant for the Koha. For those of you that do not know the Koha, the club right there on the corner of West Street and Kennedy was part of the Chitlin circuit, and the grant was for two million dollars. We finally, after you know, getting them what they needed and them asking more questions, we have the agreement. That's, that needs to be reviewed. Um, but I can't tell you what a, what, what an improvement that would be for that building. Um, it, is, it is cultural, culturally significant to the history of, of entertainers that couldn't entertain anywhere else. So I'll give you more information as that comes. The community policing grant was a I, and, and the, I'm saying grant those appropriations. There are two appropriations that were submitted, five that were submitted, two that were received, one was the two million. The one million we weren't sure of, and it was for community policing. So it's, it's funny how that came up tonight, but different ways that we can police the community for safety reasons, um, having a, a, a liaison officer, however, but that million dollar grant has moved to the next level as well. So I don't have the agreement or anything on that, but I'll keep you abreast. Today I walked, I had a meeting with Congress, Congressman Frost's office, his representatives, and I took them to Catalina. Um, it does concern me that every year is flooded. And to say that it's been happening for years, but we haven't done a, an examination of why to, to redirect or um, re-engineer that area, that does concern me. Um, it does concern me that water keep rising into the back of houses. Flood insurance is expensive. You know, so um, I did meet with them and that same appropriations process, I'll be going with, through that office. And one of the things that I am requesting is perhaps looking at a some sort of storm wall, seawall, 
that you still, you know, if you live on a lake, for those who live in Catalina, you know what I'm talking about, that you still live on a lake, but you still have that wall there, give you a couple more feet before that water invades the, the property. Um, also, the, the park in general, the docks, and redesigning the water flow. So, because right now that pipe is under the water, so redesigning that. So I just want to let you know that, you know, it's an appropriation. You get it, you don't get it. Um, but they, they really were interested in how they could help. Um, so as I learn more, I'll keep you abreast of that. The municipal plan that I'm asking you to consider a, and allowing me to, to find the money for, it should incorporate all of this. We piecemeal. We piecemeal impact these, which is huge. The pool. But, but it all comes together. It's all one community. So how do those things come together? And what municipal plan can we put together so that all of the right pieces are in place so that, so that when we negotiate on this end for this project, we're negotiating for this project and this project. And we're looking at it in totality. And that is my, that's my wish. And there is money out there. But I, I've asked for you know groups to come in that can seek out money continuously. You know, so hopefully now we're starting to see how having someone on a continuous basis seek out grant funding for the town and be ready to administer and get that extra staffing needed in order to make sure that money is spent correctly. Hopefully we're seeing now how important that is. Um, looking forward to clean up day and I think that that is, oh, thank you, Ms. Hirsch. I will be contacting you. Thank you. And thank you, Angela Johnson and Mr. Dix. I'll be contacting you too. I'm almost free right next week. Thanks, God. <laughs> so I can um, definitely reach out and have some meetings with some people to follow up. Ms. Simmons, looking forward to following up with you. Um, however, you work it out with Juneteenth. And I think that's it. I think that's it. Everyone, thank you very much. That being a little bit more. <laughs> I was I did. I've been looking at her all night, you know, since I wear glasses. All right, with that, um, the meeting is adjourned. I'm going to have to go. Oh, how does that mean be adjourned? Oh, someone.